welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight we are discussing an ever-changing world, Zoomers versus Boomers and everything in between. And we welcome our next guest, who is an expert prioritizing culture and values as a tool to help organizations define their direction. Please join me in welcoming to the show workplace culture consultant, Jasmine Shah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. What does that job title mean? Exactly. Oh. I'm not quite sure if I'm honest with you. Um, what does it mean? It means we help organisations bring their people together in the best way, behind what they need to do, but also in a way that rewards their people for what they're doing, which is why we're called Together. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, I know that there was a way of doing business. Mm -hmm. And then the millennials came in and they said, you can wear T-shirts to work and we're going to get some beer. <laughs> uh, is this something that's constantly evolving in all different kinds of corporations? Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's there's a bit of a tension, actually, at the moment, which you've probably seen, seen yourselves with, you know, the leadership are kind of like, they've had enough freedom over COVID. Yeah. Bring them back to the office. They don't need beanbags, cost cutting. Why would we bring them back? And then you've got all these Gen Zs entering saying, what is this? How do you work like this? What's in it for me now to be in this workplace, in this office? So there's definitely that growing tension and I hope the beanbags today, to be honest, I quite <laughs> like them. How do you think they can tackle something like that, especially with having the older generation with the younger generation right now? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's all about communicating and listening. Yeah. I think that at the moment we're in a world where you have to over communicate. I know you always had to, but you have to even more because you've got people everywhere, right? Yeah. Working from absolutely everywhere speaking in different ways, especially here with different interpretations of words. So talk, bring people together, find ways to connect over what drives them, yeah. not just what drives the business. Sure. I'm just curious though, what did you notice is like the most common problem between the boomers and the Gen Z and the millennials when they're not getting along in the workplace? I honestly, I just think it's a lack of having a conversation and realizing that there's actually more that unites them than separates them. Yeah. I think there's definitely this kind of, well, I have to work like this, so that should mean you should learn and work like this. Um, but in reality, we are all learning and working in different ways. It's not just what your boss is teaching you in the morning. It's what you're learning online and what you're hearing from other people. So I think, it, again, it's all back to that communication and helping people understand we actually care about the same thing here. This isn't just a nine to five, which I think some of the tension is with definitely my dad's generation, who's in the boomers. Yes. Um, and I want to like, you know, do something meaningful, do something impactful. Yeah, I was definitely in the workforce. Um, I was definitely the generation of bringing t-shirts into the workforce for sure. <laughs> but I know that for you, you're really passionate about culture. Um, how do you use culture to sort of bridge the gap of not just Zoomers, boomers, but just all diversity? Yeah, absolutely. Really good question. I think for us when I, and, and well for me and for Together as an organization, we always, always start with your purpose, your mission, your vision and your values. Mm -hmm. And if you can get, you know, super crystal clear on what is it we stand for, why are we doing it and how do we all agree we all show up together to do it, which is your values, you can really unite people and, you know, listen to them get their involvement in how you want to talk about what we do. Now, I sort of feel bad for the Generation X uh, people because I think they went into the workforce when it was, you know, you, you start new. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, work hard, sir, sir. Hierarchy, hierarchy, manager, boss. Um, and now they're hiring Gen Z who seem to not care about hierarchy. <laughs> they don't care about these titles. They talk to their bosses like they're their friends. Are you noticing that kind of annoyance in the workplace? A hundred percent. I think, look, some of the best leaders I've worked with don't find it annoying and they're trying to reflect on There's themselves. one right here. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to think you're pretty self-aware. Trying. trying. We all, we're all trying, aren't we? I think, look, if you reflect on yourself and understand, many of them have children. That's definitely with, with the boss I work with at the moment. She's got children from different generations. And so it's just removing yourself with this is work and you should obey me to actually, let's understand what this person cares about. And yeah, they might talk to me a bit differently and maybe not have workplace etiquette in the same way, which I know is a bit of a hot topic. Um, but at the end of the day, they're there because they care. They wouldn't have joined the business in the first place if they didn't. Do you, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you see a shift in, like, let's say, loyalty in sticking to one job? Because a lot of the new generation uh, kids or whoever is just joining the workforce would like to change and not stay in the same place for a long time. But then the older generation would like to stick for a very long time sometimes. Do you see that as well? A hundred, hundred percent. So, um, and I think as a millennial, I'm almost trapped in between. Yeah. I want to be somewhere and grow there, and then I actually want to get lots of experience on my CV, which is seen as more valuable now, right? Yeah. There's definitely a shift in loyalty, but there's also a shift in what loyalty do you want to provide as an employer? Mm -hmm. I think, like if I speak to my dad and, and, the, and the boomers, yeah. they definitely were there, job for life, really reputable brand. I get my end of service, I get a lovely house, a payout, etc. I live well after, right? I think now the loyalty you're getting from and what people are getting in return from employers is so yeah. different. 
And Gen Zs, I mean, they were around where mass tech layoffs, financial crisis, so they're like, why should I be loyal to these organizations who seem to just be messing around with everyone else above me, so I'm gonna try and make it different. Now, well, when Gen Z started, obviously COVID was there, they got used to working from home and things like that. Would you say that a Gen Z would prefer a more hybrid kind of working environment? Yeah, we're always debating this, actually, based on the organization and the people. I think the one thing we know is they prefer flexibility. And I think whether we like it or not, hybrid is here to say, because COVID showed that it works, right? Um, and so I think there's definitely preference, but I don't think that's just Gen Z, if I'm honest. I think that's everyone. It's just the degrees of hybrid versus, like being in the office versus being online. I think that's where the debate is at the moment. Yeah, but then again, I think any generation would like a little bit more. I'd like to do time. this at home. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yes. On that, how do you, you, we spoke about previously just before uh, about trust, right? Like you talk mm. about the lack of trust in the workplace. What's the one thing that you think a workforce can celebrate to try and drive more trust both on, on both sides in terms of where the business wants to go, but also the team that's contributing towards it? A hundred percent great question. Because um, everything, absolutely think everything starts with trust and we've eroded it. I think for me, and actually similar to your world, it's all about stories and celebrating stories, team stories, personal stories, um, collective stories, but just hold on to those stories, talk about them, because yes. that's what we all care about, and that's how we connect at the end of the day. Well, Jasna, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. And now we've got something with Louis, which is the XP 60. Are uh, you ready, Mike? Yes, <laughs> Mike, we're gonna put you on the oh, spot wow, right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you know about this, but we are gonna be quizzing you for 60 seconds. Ooh. But don't worry, it's all about you. We wanna know more about Mike, okay? So rapid fire questions, 60 seconds, starts in three, two, one, go. If you were the CEO of Tactical, what would you be doing? If I was, if I if wasn't. If you weren't. If I wasn't, oh, um, I'd be like Gen X, trying to build my own YouTube channel, I think, <laughs> oh, TikTok. No. Or, now, what like was fun. your first job? Yeah, what was my first job? Yeah. Um, PR and marketing. Interesting, your motto in life and in work? Motto in life and keep it simple. Like just, I, I live for a life of simplicity and freedom. Like how can you get as close to one as possible? Oh, here's the fun one. A superpower you wish you had? Uh, being able to fly, that'd be cool. Love to the that. traffic, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Traffic's just too much. Right? Your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Go to, um, I am a, he, a huge creature of habit. Um, Kenoya is often my go-to. If you've not been, it's excellent. I endorse it. I've not been paid for this endorsement. But it is <laughs> and I hope to get a free ramen out of it. <laughs> Here, a social media platform you see dominating the next decade. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anyone that's going to dominate, to be honest with you. You've seen how much like TikTok's come out of nowhere. They bought Musical.ly and accelerate to the top. Um, I think we'll, we'll see a very different world. And I think entertainment is, is, is going to change in the next five, 10 years like we've never imagined. Now, Mike, we're actually out of time, but I have one more question for you. Why Dubai? I was born here. I was born in Abu Dhabi, lived my life, and I've been a huge benefactor of like the, gr the growth of the city, the tide rising, and um, I just want to continue contributing, driving towards that. I think it's a great energy. It's a great way to um, be part of something really special. Well, we hope to see you contributing here again. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. And Jasmine, thank great. you so much as well for being with us. Uh, we are almost about to end, but before we do, we've got a performance, haven't we? That's right, Leila is gonna be in the studio very, very soon. Don't go anywhere.